I'm going to give you a rundown of this Powerfly LT9 that I've been riding for the last day here in Bad Ragaz in Switzerland. Um, let's start with the battery because it's an e-mountain bike. Trek, famous for their three-letter acronyms, have come up with a new one. They've come up with the RIB system, R-I-B, which stands for Removable Integrated Battery System. RIBs. But anyway, RIB. Um, what's different is instead of uh, last year we had the battery sort of loaded into the down tube from the top here, this now is a side entry system. This battery here with a single key will pop out and, uh, and pop back in sideways. It's, uh, the, it goes in on the drive side here because that means you can lean the bike down on its non-drive side and you can insert the battery while it's on the floor. Kind of more convenient. Also, the battery can be charged while it's in situ. So if you've got a garage and you've got power in your garage and you can just roll your bike in, plug it in, there's a port on the other side of the motor. Um, if you don't have that facility and you need to bring the battery inside, then you can just pop it out. It's got a handle on it. Uh, you can just carry it inside and plug it into your charger there. So ultimate convenience and uh, you take your pick. Trek have stuck with the Bosch motor system. Uh, the Bosch motor system has developed quite well over the last few years. The original uh, version that came out about three years ago was a little clunky, uh, more for general e-bike use than e-mountain bike use. Uh, what we've got now is the Performance Line CX version of Bosch's e-bike motor. It has four power modes, five if you count off. Those are Eco, Tour, EMTB and Boost. Like most uh, e-mountain bikes, Boost is kind of over the top. Uh, but the EMTB mode, that's what we spent most of our time in while we were testing it today. Uh, that is much more sensitive and much more tuned to what you tend to do on a mountain bike, those sudden changes of cadence and the sudden power applications. And it seems to deal with it really well. It's kind of uh, felt much more natural, like you're riding an ordinary bike, but with obviously with a powerful motor behind it. Also, Trek have stuck with Bosch for another reason. Bosch being a big global brand, Trek claimed that the serviceability of this motor is kind of paramount to them. So it means that no matter where you are in the world, you're never that far away from someone who can actually um, service your e-bike. There's actually quite a lot more sort of e-bike specific components going on here. Let's start with e-bike specific wheels. We've got um, the Bontrager Powerline wheels here, been beefed up with 32 spokes for um, e-mountain bike. Um, John Riley, the Trek uh, product guy, reckons that these are actually stronger than their downhill wheels. Makes a lot of sense when you consider that what we've got here is a bike that weighs 51 pounds, so that's quite a lot of punishment going through those wheels. Um, and the weight as well, 51 pounds. This bike does come uh, in a carbon version if you really want to shave off some weight. That will save you 650 grams. Not quite a pound and a half. Arguable about whether that makes the blindest bit of difference with a bike of this size or with a motor. However, Trek do say that there are further benefits to making a carbon version of this, which means that they can actually make the whole form here around the motor. They can actually mold the frame in a way that they can't do with aluminium, which means that if form and how the bike looks is important to you, that might be a reason why you'd consider the carbon version. The fork, the fork has actually been beefed up specifically for e-bikes. This is a Fox 36 fork that's a lot stiffer laterally. Uh, it makes a lot of sense when you consider how much mass is trying to ram itself through the front of that fork and make that fork flex. Also at the back here, Trek uh, um, claiming that there's a feature here that the back end is actually longer than usual. They claim that this actually enhances the climbing does make sense. A long back end does tend to keep the front end down, which means that on steep climbs, you're going to be less likely to have that front wheel pop up. It's arguable whether that's actually a design feature or whether it's just a consequence of an e-bike with an enormous motor here around the bottom bracket, preventing you from really sort of compacting this chainstay. It does work. It does mean that it keeps the bike down on the big steep climbs. Whether or not it's a feature. Another change we've got this year on the power line is we've got a SRAM GX Eagle Group Tech going on. Last year, Trek spec'd the SRAM EX8 group set, which is an e-bike specific group set. Less gears, eight sprockets, because you've got that extra addition of the power coming through the motor, so it's arguable that you, you don't actually need the full range. However, Trek have found that there's a kind of an expectation at high-end bikes that people want to see uh, a big, expensive, high-end group set on it and so for more consumer reasons they've actually spec this now with a 12-speed GX Eagle system. Now it's interesting 
that they're claiming that that's because of you guys thinking that the EX8 is a bit too cheap looking and uh, so I'd like to hear your comments on that one. Trek have spec this with their new line dropper post. Now this is interesting because this is 150 millimeters of dropper post and that's the only size they do. Those who know me know I'm a little bit short in stature and I generally never go anywhere near 150 mil dropper. It's just too much. But Trek have done two things here. One, they've changed the way that they've built the seat tube here and you can actually insert the seat post down a further 10 millimeters inside the frame that kind of helps but also you can actually get uh, travel reduction spaces that fit inside the dropper post to actually reduce its travel which is kind of handy um, also they claim that this is a one tool user serviceable seat post which is kind of a big deal for seat posts imagine that a seat post you can actually service yourself now we've been I've only had this for a day so uh, we've given a good uh, ride through the mountains around here. Uh, not enough to really form uh, too much of an opinion on it. So we are going to get one of these into the office soon and we'll give it a thorough testing on our home trails. So as usual, if you want to know more about this bike, you want to know the whole specs, the measurements, the angles, check out our website, singletrackworld.com. We'll have the full uh, information package for you right there. So that's all from me from Bad Regaz. I'm tuning out and uh, I'll see you soon.